Come, God is leading us forward. Our souls find rest at last. I invite you to sing our gathering song to gather us in in 532. I invite you to stand. Join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, we would be lost without your direction, wanderers in the wildernesses of our own making. We praise you for dealing us so graciously with your people in the past, when you guided them to freedom and the promise of life. We are heirs of that promise fulfilled in Jesus our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I really enjoyed, I shouldn't say enjoyed, but I really appreciated that prayer we just prayed here. We have just finished the story of Moses all of these weeks through this fall, and now we start with the next storytelling in the Old Testament. They're outside the promised land now, so we start the story of Joshua. But first today, I would like to start with the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 1, 
in the first six verses of Matthew. And I want you to, it will make sense later. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the first chapter. An account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez and Zerar by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Aram, and Aram the father of Abinadab, and Abinadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Solomon. And Solomon, the father of Boaz by Rahab. And Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth. And Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of King David. The Gospel of our Lord. Okay. You've heard the genealogy of Jesus, and you have heard some female names in there. Now I invite you to join me in the second reading as found in your bulletin. I invite you to join me in the Hebrews chapter 11. A Hebrews, a book at the end of the New Testament, and this section is entitled The Faith of Other Israelite Heroes. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been in the circle for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient. Because she has received the peace. We have now had two readings from the New Testament, and they are pointed out by name Rahab the prostitute. So I do invite you to uh, get out your pew Bibles. And if you want to read along with me the story of Joshua. So this is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. The sixth book of the Bible. Old Testament. And I am on page 251 in the Old Testament. So we have ended. Deuteronomy was last week. Moses gave his farewell speech, and this is the next thing that happens. Joshua has taken over from Moses. They are across, they haven't crossed over the Jordan River yet, but now they uh, are prepared to cross the Jordan and enter into the promised land. But Joshua first needs to see what's ahead of him. Spies sent to Jericho, we're in chapter 2. Then Joshua, son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shechem and asked the spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab and spent the night there. The king of Jericho was told, Some Israelites have come here tonight to search out the land. They have to imagine that Jericho is about 10 acres in size. And they're kind of at a crossroads, so they're going to know when foreigners come into their city. They were all those were walled cities. So they know when other people come in. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab. Bring out the men who have come to you, who entered your house, for they have come only to search out the whole land. But the woman took the two men and hid them. If she's been caught hiding them, it's death for her. But she said, True, the men came to me, but I did not know where they came from. 
And when it was time to close the gate at dark, the men went out. Where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for you can overtake them. She's telling a bold, outright lie. She's hiding them. But she's very clever. She had, however, brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax that she laid out on the roof. That curious detail of flax. The flax is on the roof and they're drying. That's the first harvest of the spring. What comes after flax is barley. So this lets us know this detail that we're coming up on the Passover. The Passover happens at the Feast of Barley. God, in the Old Testament, set up all these feasts around harvest times, something visible that we can live and experience. So we know it's at the time of Passover. So the men pursued them, those are the king's men. So the king's men pursued them on the way to the Jordan, as far as the fjords. The Jordan River is about 10 miles from Jericho. So as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Now before they went to sleep that night, the spies, she came up to them on the roof and said to the spies, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that dread of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land fell in fear before you. Now this is where Rahab, the Canaanite woman, she knows the story of the Israelites. Listen to this. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. So I'm sure she's heard in the Passover too. But they know the story of the crossing of the Red Sea. And that was 40 years ago. Remember they've been in the desert 40 years now wandering. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond the Jordan, to Sahon and Ah, that has just happened. Whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard it, our hearts melted, and there was no courage left in any of us because of you. That's the Israelites. The profession of faith. The Lord your God is indeed God in heaven above and on earth below. Now then, since I have dealt kindly with you, swear to me by the Lord that you in turn will deal kindly with my family. Give me a sign of good faith that you will spare my mother and father, my brothers and sisters, and all belong to them and deliver our lives from death. Now let's just talk about the white elephant in the room. That Rahab is indeed a prostitute. It's very clear. She is a prostitute. But think about why is she a prostitute? It's pretty clear here that she is caring for her mother and father and her siblings. She's the wage earner. Prostitute, the oldest profession in the world, mostly came because of poverty. So the spies said to her, Our life or yours, if you do not tell this business of ours, that they're in the land, scoping it out, and she knows exactly where they are, then we will deal kindly and faithfully with you when the Lord gives us the land. Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the outside of the city wall, and she resided within the wall itself. A rope through the window. She said to them, Go toward the hill country, so if you go towards the hill country, that's the opposite direction from the Jordan River. So they're going up into the hills to hide because nobody's going to think to look for them there because all the Israelites are on the other side of the river. So that the pursuers may not come upon you. Hide yourself three days. I hope you hear something in three days. Hide for three days until the pursuers have returned. Then afterward you may go your way. The men said to her, We will be released from this oath that you have made us swear to you if we invade the land 
and you do not tie this crimson cord in the window through which you have let us down. So now there's the crimson cord she has to put out the window. And that will mark her house. And you do not gather into your house, your father and your mother, your brothers, and all your family. If any of them go out of the doors of your house into the street, they shall be responsible for their own death. And we shall be innocent. But if a hand is laid upon any who are with you in the house, we shall bear the responsibility for their death. But if you tell us this as far as that we shall be released from this oath that you made us swear to you, she said, according to your words, so be it. She sent them away and they departed. Three days later, she tied the crimson cord in the window. They departed, the spies, and went into the hill country and stayed three days until the pursuers returned back to the city. The pursuers had searched all along the way and found nothing. Then the two spies came down again from the hill country. They crossed over, came to Joshua, son of Nun, and told them all that had happened to them. And they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has given all the land to our hands. Moreover, all the inhabitants of the land knelt in fear before us. That story from the spies is not going to give Joshua courage. If we're reading here in Joshua, the Lord is going to tell Joshua four times, be bold, be strong, you can do this. So now what I submit is that we should know this story of Rahab, but we really don't know this story. But the story we do know we all know this, is Joshua and the walls of Jericho, right? So just look your pages now in chapter 6. Uh, yeah. uh, Jericho taken and destroyed. Okay, Lenny, take it away. And I think that's what makes me excited, is I love 
what really got me to go to seminary is I love to see the Hebrew or the Greek in its original language because there's so much we miss as English readers. So this simple little word, rope. She lowered them down by a rope through the window for her house was in the wall. She was living in the wall. But Rahab feared the Lord and covered for them and she let them out the window with a rope. In Hebrew, that word rope is shabel. Shabel. And even in modern Hebrew, it's the same word for rope. Shabel. <clears throat> but there's also another meaning that can go with shabel. And that also means pain, sorrow, travail. So think of your own lives and how we can be bound up with shabel bound with our own sorrows and griefs and pains. And this word, Shabal, Shabal, crops up a lot in the book of Job. We all know the story of Job. So Rahab lets them down on this Shabal. And she said to them, go to the hill country and hide yourself for three days. I hope you remember another important three days in our life as Christians. This time of waiting, the three days, Good Friday to Easter Sunday. Then the men said to her, We will be released from this old thing you have made, unless when we come into this land you tie this line of crimson cord. The Hebrew word has changed now, and now it's, the word is cord versus rope. This line and the cord now is crimson. Of this window through which you lowered us down. Three days you are to let that rope down. But this time again, the Hebrew word is different. And now the word for this is a rope, this cord is tikva. Tikva. It means cord, something you can grasp. But it also means hope. Hope for us in the English way can really sometimes be like hard to grasp. What is hope? How do we hope? But in the Hebrew, it's concrete. It's a cord you hold on to. You can do it. It's concrete. So gather yourself in the house, your mother, your father, your brothers, and your sisters, all in your father's household. Whoever goes out of the doors of your house to the street, his blood will be on his head and we will be innocent. Laura Rahab said, according to her, so be it. So she sent them away. And she tied that crimson cord and stayed three days. So think about the Passover story. They painted the crimson blood from the lamb on the doors. And all who painted at the story of Passover we're saved. So we're starting to hear echoes from that Exodus story now with Joshua. Just through that little red cord, that crimson cord. So the first time the rope went out the window, Shabel bound up pain, destruction. But three days later, the cord goes out, and now it's cord of hope. The red cord. So we are starting to foreshadow and see glimpses of this grand story of salvation. And then the Passover, our Passover candle, baptism, all that, pointed to the death and resurrection of the Messiah. So Rahab. Rahab, she's now living with the Israelites went on to marry one of the tribe, Salmon. And tradition has it that Salmon was one of the two spies. It doesn't tell us in the Bible, but that's the tradition. He was one of the spies. And they had a son called Boaz. Two years ago, remember the whole season of Advent, two years ago, we did the Book of Ruth, four straight Sundays in Advent. Boaz was the redeemer, the kinsman, who then married Ruth the Moabite. And Ruth, 
again, one of the hated enemies of Israel, is in Jesus' line, his genealogy. So here in Jesus' line, we've got Rahab, the prostitute, the Canaanite, and we've got Ruth, the Moabite. And those are all in Jesus' line. And Ruth the Moabite gave birth to Obed, father of Jesse, who was the father of King David. So when I came in this morning, and I walked up to the altar, I'm giving it away. Does anybody see anything red behind me? So I came in this morning, when he's wonderfully here, opening everything up, and uh, I come up to the altar to set the pages for the communion liturgy, and this is what I see. And I can't make that up. It's the bookmark. There are, uh, that marks all of my pages up here, they're all different color, and the red one, when I came in, was just laying here. The red cord, the crimson cord is laying there. And uh, just that immediate feeling of being blessed and the Holy Spirit is with us, accompanying us, and giving us signs of hope. So, now, back to your bulletin cover. You now know what that is. And what's really interesting is that is the Jesse tree. In Advent, we build the Jesse tree. These ornaments, you should recognize these from our church. Um, they all tell the story started in Old Testament that foreshadows Christ, the Jesse tree, Jesse, the father of King David, that's why it's called, it's from Jesse's son, David. So I submit there should absolutely, on the Jesse tree, be an ornament for Rahab. And this is a Jesse tree ornament. It is made in Sweden. This ornament comes from Sweden, and in US dollars it costs $27. So may you also be blessed on this day with this cord of teapot, this red cord of hope. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing our hymn of the day, Be Thou My Vision, in 793.
online congregation, I will say, be our vision, and invite each respond with an old ruler of all. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings of faith around the globe. And we pray especially for our companion Lutheran Church of Malawi. Bless their work as ours. Be our vision. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. Transform the devastations of floods and fires into fertile ground for new harvests and new life and grow. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Be our vision. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Be our vision. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination and for all people discriminated against based on their gender, identity, or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Be our vision. Arise, O oh God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep, and those we now name silently in our hearts. In our joy and in our tears, be near us, be our vision. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. And may we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Be our vision. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God and hold us forever in your chesed, your steadfast and loving kindness, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace and love of Christ be with you all. And also with you. By your son, and be well in Christ. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God. Mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life, heaven and earth, full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the word of the prophets, and at the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news and were indeed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is new come into my blood, shed you for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. In believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood and live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all of your saints in life. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants in every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. I invite you to pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Receive the benediction. Go now in the freedom of the gospel of Christ. Encourage one to lead lives worthy of God and walk together in service and humility. Let your words and lives be one of Christ. And may the God of lasting love open the way before you. May Jesus the Messiah be your one instructor. And may the Holy Spirit lead you on into the promised land of God's kingdom and glory. Peace and love and peace to the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. I invite you to stand and sing our Sunday song, Catch Love and Turning in 723. Christ, Christ is with you. Go in peace and serve the Lord.